It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Denver Broncos coming up next. In a few months' time, snow will blanket the Great Peaks just to our west. But for now, summer still in full swing at Empower Field at Mile High. Brandon Gond and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles, quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. And off we go from Denver. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So the Steelers make their way out, led by their fourth-year quarterback, picked up in the offseason from the Chicago Bears, Justin Fields. And while things obviously didn't pan out in Chicago, he told us the other day he's looking forward to making the most of this next opportunity. Let's not forget, Fields is one of the few quarterbacks in NFL history to rush for over 1,000 yards in a season. So his struggles certainly have been from a lack of talent, but for him to make the next step, he has become as productive with his arm as he is with his legs. Fields gonna throw right away. And all oh, right away, he lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. So they will set up shot. Excellent field position in the red zone at the 19-yard line. As you and I both know, one reason teams script plays to start a game is so they can practice them ahead of time. I will guarantee you, that fumble was not in the script. You don't think they had fumble written next to play one there? <laughs> no, that was never in the script because they want to have good memories when they go into a ball game, not something that could have gone wrong. So now here are the Broncos to take over on offense, led out by their rookie quarterback, drafted 12th overall, Bo Nix out of Oregon. And so often when you've stolen a possession, as they just did there. On the first play. First play, picking up the fumble, the natural inclination is to attack, go after them big. Sometimes what you just want to do is put the ball in the hands of one of your best players in one of their favorite plays and establish your dominance that way. Following the fumble recovery, Knicks out route complete to Dulcich. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Second and six. Throwing Knicks quickly into the hands of Mims. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. A stop there on third. They could have held him to three on this opening drive. Now they have to bow their necks on first and goal. And if I'm looking at this from the offense's point of view, that's a big-time pickup right there, and I'd go right at him with another moment. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Adam Troutman from a yard out. And the Broncos use the early turnover to get on the board first here in this one. Walking into the stadium, we saw a ton of people donning the jerseys of this rookie quarterback, so you know they love that opening drive, and he throws a touchdown pass. He gave a little bit of confirmation about what they had hoped, right? Because they thought they had a quarterback. They're thinking they have a quarterback. You do this, they believe they've got a quarterback. Look up elbowing each other up in the stands. That's our guy. 
Lutz with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Just a four-play drive that time, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. They had the fumble on the last drive, wound up leading to the opening touchdown. Now they'll try again here, first and 10. Fields. That one tipped and it's incomplete. But good hands there defensively. That's second down. Yes, sir. How about an out boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Second and ten. Now it's Fields. Got an open man, it's Pickens. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter, he's gonna get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They geared up and took the deep shot downfield, but it turned out it wasn't one-on-one -on -one coverage. Extra defenders in the area, and that one winds up incomplete. Now a second and ten. Here's Fields. Here's one deep for Pickens. And it's knocked away. Complete. They're giving him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes with a big third down coming up. He's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. From the gun, here's Fields. He's got his target. That's complete. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 19 yards that time for number 19. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Gets this out wide to Pickens. So that'll be no better than an incompletion, and it'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Here's second and ten. Back to throw, Fields. Throw left side complete. That's Harris. It'll go as a gain of four. And now third down and six to go. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Now Fields. 
Middle of the field to Jefferson. And he's brought down short by a yard. It's a third down gain of four. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. They run for it with Harris. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. At first glance, I actually wasn't sure that he got it, but he ended up getting it by about a full yard. He certainly did, but it took a little effort, didn't it? Took some nice push, a little crease inside, and some determined running to make sure that he got the first down. And he's got this to Jefferson. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. And coming into this ball game, this was an offense that wasn't just talking about the notion of ball control. They were preaching it. They wanted to win the time of possession battle, and they've done so here. This drive's taken up quite a bit of the first quarter. Now they are set up first and goal. Harris will score. Touchdown, Steelers. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there, and each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And they will wrangle them down a couple of yards shy of the 30. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense... They just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. They begin the drive with Williams. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Williams going to get it again on second down. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. to throw. Here's Nix. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. And that is how you respond after taking one on the chin to begin this game. Give up a first drive touchdown, go back out on defense, and completely shut them down to force a three and out. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. The back deep for the Steelers is Calvin Austin. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And he didn't quite have the bag spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Steelers ready for their next possession. 
This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he's going to find Jefferson open downfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 33 yards that time. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 47. On play action, Fields. Shifts by him, and they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes he could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape, and they paid dearly for not locking up. To throw his fields. Completes it to Austin. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15. A gain of three. A second and seven with our score tied at seven. But they're planning to change that soon. Only question, will they get three or six out of it? They'll try the right side with Harris. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. A good run there off right tackle in an old-school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they can... And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Calvin Austin there to make the grab and the Steelers have taken the lead they went empty backfield all their weapons out wide so there were, there really was no secret here to what they were going to do no secret but they still had to execute it and they still had to protect the guy throwing the ball because oftentimes when you empty the backfield people bring pressure at you they managed to hold in there and successfully complete the touchdown pass extra point now by Boswell It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. The drive summary that time, five plays. And in the end, a Calvin Austin touchdown grab finished the drive off. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And Denver getting set to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now? Is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And back to the 30. It'll be second down. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and six. They run it again with Williams. And he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32.
Here's third and three. To throw is Nix. That is caught. And he will have a Broncos first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep. And this is caught inside the five. And he'll be touched down at the end, but a big play on that one. A huge play there for Denver, 57 yards. Here's Nix. And that's going to be knocked away and incomplete. And with the time has expired on the first quarter. Through one quarter, 14-7 our score. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football. As they come up now, second and goal. Now receiver in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. They'll try and throw. Here's Nix. And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Marvin Mims five-yard touchdown and the Broncos are an extra point away from evening this one up there was a lot of zip on that pass and baseball might have called that a frozen rope I like it when you bring the diamond into the game I'm going back to the gridiron had some heat on that bad boy sometimes you throw a touchdown pass and sometimes you throw what a touchdown strike there you go that's my man in concert Lutz will look to add the extra point. And we've got a good one, Bruin. We're all knotted up at 14. So that drives seven plays in length. And it ends with a Denver touchdown. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Fields now to throw. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Fields. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. 
After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Looking to throw. Fields. That's going to be caught by Pickens. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Pickens is coming off the season where he clips the 1,000-yard mark for the first time in his career and averaged a league-leading 18.1 yards per reception. He is truly a budding superstar, and the Steelers are going to continue to find ways to get him the ball. Finding Pickens for another catch. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Another first down as he went right back to the same well, this time for 17 yards. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Now run straight ahead with Warren. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Now second and nine. On the give, it's Warren. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. And the Steelers on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and four. Back to throw. Fields. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. Looking to throw. Fields. And yeah, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Good defensive call right there because they had someone shadowing him along his entire route. And he was right there, ready to provide a hit that prevents him from making another catch to his big start. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Back to throw. Fields. That throw finds Pickens in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the Steelers are going to take the lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Boswell for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was finished off by a George Pickens touchdown grab. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Denver's offense now set to go. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, 
pass rush, pass <laughs> rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. Uh, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. T.J. Watt causing the disruption. He gets the sack. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth. Both of these offenses having their way so far. So maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely. And that sack, finally a first step in the right direction for a stop. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Short throw caught by Dulcich. A good pick up there. 13 yards as they get closer for third down. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down as a manageable situation. One that they have a much better chance of picking up. Now it's Nix. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Broncos first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. Pretty good location there on that throw. It really was, wasn't it? That was likely one where the receiver was either going to catch it or no one. Really good decision. And boy, what a catch and move right there. And a tough spot to get it over the middle. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Last standing that time from Keanu Benton. Got in there and hit him for a loss. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Next to the air. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And that play came together really well for them as he found open space, makes the catch, and gets down to the one-yard line. You know he's kicking himself right now. He thought he had a chance to get a touchdown and put that in his ledger. Instead, his team gets a chance to cash in over these next few plays. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They go back to the ground with Williams. And he can only manage to get a couple second and eight coming up that's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball held him to a gain of two and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays second and eight now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game Williams going to get it again on second down and only able to get two here stopped at the 30 Two yards on the first down carry, and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. From the gun on third down, it's Knicks. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. Dante Jackson picks it. And the Steelers will take over here at their own 14-yard line. That pick hurts a little extra because it was third down. You were already in field goal range. You know what he's going to hear all night, all next week? Situational football. Understand what's going on because you expressed it perfectly. Three points were in their hip pocket. They had those. Now, those went by the wayside. You cannot make those kind of mistakes. It's what you call a rookie mistake. George Pickens back out now with the rest of the offense. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate 
keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want. And other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. Again, it's Harris on second down. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. The offense on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and seven. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Able to find his man. It's Pickens. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Has a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? It should be aware, but it was so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not easy. Because, because when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Fields. He finds Austin complete. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A really good pickup of 28 yards. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Now it's Fields. To the right side, and complete to Jefferson. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. And throwing again is Fields. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Second and 11 now. A shotgun snap, Fields completes this one to Pickens. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Again, Fields. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. A chance to really cap off a big first half here as they come up on first and goal. Out of the gun, Fields. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. John Franklin Myers, the one in there to drop him. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call.
So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Boswell's kick is good, and the lead works its way up to 10, 24-14. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense, the firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And they'll have time for one play. There's two seconds on the clock. He'll air this one out for Nims. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Steelers out in front. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. We got a fine first half out of the former Alabama man, Najee Harris. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, coach. Thank you very much. As we welcome you back for quarter number three. It'll be the Broncos getting the football first in this second half as they trail, and we are back underway. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. In well, the first half, they struggled a little bit to keep pace offensively, CD, down two scores here. So how do they make some changes coming out of the locker room? Well, they've studied what they did in the first half. They've seen what the defense has thrown at them. Now they want to have a plan of attack against it. So you come out, you're not going to get all the points back on one drive, but get started on it. Start chopping into that lead, and maybe it'll inspire your defense to help out as well. To throw, here's Nix. That's taken in, complete to Reynolds. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll bring up second down. And I think he just wanted to get the ball to one of his playmakers to see if they can make something happen, but he ends up throwing into a crowded area, and after the catch, he isn't able to do much with it. Now second and three. Up the middle, it's Williams. And this defense able to plug him up there as he'll get a yard to the 35. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Now a 10th carry, here's Williams. And Williams is going to be stopped short of the yellow line. He did not get there. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Steelers' offense and quarterback Justin Fields heading back out there. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out.
The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Now, both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. Got his man, it's Warren. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Now Fields. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Multiple defenders there to drop him for a loss of four. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. So after the sack here, second and 14. Harris running straight ahead. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 40 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And he's got it across midfield and into Denver territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. They'll send Austin in motion right. Now they fake the jet sweep there and a run instead with Harris. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Four yards the pick up, first down. Look, I realize on any play call, when it's properly executed, it can go for a touchdown. But the runs that really make it work are the ones where you just get what you need, right? And he barely got the first down, but he got it. Here's Fields. And he's got this to Jefferson. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Second down and six now. Back to throw, Fields. Open man, that's the tight end, Firemuth. And he is out of bounds, looks like right at the 15. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. They hand this off to Harris. And now they're gonna get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play and it'll be second down. This defense could use a few more plays like that right now. It certainly could, but think about it from an offense's perspective right now. They've got a lead, but they don't want to throttle down too much and stall themselves. Still want to move at a nice pace. To throw his fields. He finds Pickens over the middle. So the completion results there in nine yards. And now two yards to go on third down.
From the gun, here's Fields. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. And they got three yards. That's enough. A conversion, and now it's first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Play action. It's Fields. Got his man. It's caught for a Steelers touchdown. Van Jefferson from four are able to add on to that lead that drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me very precise methodical as one of the words you've taught me and they just got it done and slowly but surely now starting to pull a bit. things looking good for them here in the third quarter not only pulling away but you mentioned that slowly but surely you also drain clock too with yep. a drive like that so you really give yourself an advantage Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They'll try to get this running game going with Williams. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Here's second and three. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. To throw is Nix. Over the middle complete. It's Reynolds. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 11 yards for number 11. They'll run out of the gun here. Williams. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Larry Ogunjobi there to make the tackle. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no game. Throwing left side, it's complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 23. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Here's Nix. And his throw's going to be incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Second and ten now. Third quarter action in Denver. Now we give up the middle to Williams. 
And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback, but so far, not much in the running game, and this won't help things either. A loss on that play. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Throwing Knicks. It's Williams on the catch. And he's going to be taken down short of the first, right around the 15-yard line. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. Well, they certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. They'll go for it. Here's Nix. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And the drive stays in motion with a nice eight-yard pickup on fourth. The hitch route works. It's something you see quite a bit on third and fourth down in these situations, and they got it to go for them. And what you're counting on is a couple of things. One, you want the guy catching that route to make people miss right away, almost like a punt returner. And two, you're expecting to pick up some blocks once he gets to the second level, able to get downfield. And on that play, everything came together. Three yards is the gain that time, second and goal. We have played three quarters. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's the Broncos trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. Williams will take it in. Touchdown, Denver. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Lutz to try to add the PAT. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was capped off by a Javante Williams touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Steelers offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And this defense might be about ready to wave the white flag. Nothing they have tried to throw at him has been that successful. He just processes things so quickly and makes the right read seemingly every time. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but... Maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Second and 10 now from the 27. A handoff for Warren. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. And this offense on third down today, they've been excellent. Six for seven. This is third and seven. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard stripe. Five yards that time out of the scramble. 
But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. That looked great when he first took off because in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly and neither did he. They got to him just in time and now that forced him to make a decision with this fourth down call. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news, but this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Good starting position for the Broncos here as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. They begin the drive with Williams. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. From just shy of midfield, here's a second and five. Next to the air. I think the defenders have to feel pretty good, even though the ball was tipped in the air and could have become a big play for the offense. They actually won one because the guy flinging it today, he's having quite the performance. A couple of touchdown passes, almost threw his first interception, but he's throwing it so well that I think Lady Luck was on his side. Now it's Knicks. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Good clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion, and that should get him off the field with a three and out. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the Steelers, they're going to take over an excellent field position. Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call. But how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? Hey, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. Fields now to throw. Throw left side, hauled in by Pickens. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Here's Fields. Setting up the screen, Harris. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Four yards, the pickup, first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets them a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Now it's Fields. That's going to be caught by Pickens. From the 33, here's a second down and four. A shotgun snap, Fields. He finds his man, complete. It's Warren, and he is out of bounds inside the 30. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. A short one there to Firemuth. And he will have a Steelers first down as that'll be a pickup of about five as they convert on third and inches. 
That time the conversion comes courtesy of the RPO. And know what it did? It moved the sticks. Nice pickup on third down, even better decision. To the air again, Fields. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Looked like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there, and the defense was ready to jump in and deny it, and they did. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now a give running left is Harris. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. 75 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. A play fake, now Fields to throw. That throw finds Pickens in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Steelers are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Extra point now by Boswell. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was finished off by a George Pickens touchdown grab. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Broncos about set to go on offense. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And a Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. T.J. Watt able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. But found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Looking to throw. Nix finding Williams on the check down. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. I believe I could see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught 11 on the field. Those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. And it's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. 
All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here's Nix once more. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Now the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. To throw, here's Nix. He completes this to Sutton. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. T.J. Watt able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. So after a rare misstep on this drive, they'll try to make amends on second and 15. Operating from the gun, Nix. That is caught, Josh Reynolds. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 27-yard line. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 27. Knicks from the shotgun. He's got Dulcich going across the formation. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Greg Dulcich, 27 yards. And the Broncos have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well, they needed three scores to have any chance. There's the first of the three as they get into the end zone. Yeah, Brandon, I think that our guys at Next Gen Stats in charge of the win probability are probably saying your chances still aren't great. But now, you still got more than three minutes to go. You got to focus on the task at hand, which is going to be getting the football back as quickly as possible. Lutz good on the extra point, and the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And a Greg Dulcich touchdown reception finished that drive off. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this doesn't work. The Steelers recover it. The visitors offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And he has been masterful so far in leading this offense. He's kept the mistakes to a minimum. He's been on point with his passes. And he's generally been one step ahead of this defense all game long. Out of the gun, Fields. That one to the sideline, and a nice catch there. He stays in bounds, but a penalty marker is down as well. Trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times you just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. 
I think he got caught in between and created a foul. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Here's Warren. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down. Stay in bounds. Keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. So the delay of game penalty moves it back five. That makes it second and ten. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he'll be down close to the first down marker as he gets this to the Broncos' 27. 83 yards rushing for him now to this point. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They run again with Harris. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Now second and five. Snap will come from the six. On the give, this is Harris. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. They run with Harris. And he is going to have a Steeler first down. All smiles on that sideline. That should be the one to do it. Two yards is the pickup. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
And they say it's never easy to come into Denver to win because of the altitude. Uh, they look pretty comfortable in the altitude. They certainly did. I'm not quite sure how they got prepared. And it's always been a big debate about what to do. I lived out there at one point. I lived in Colorado Springs. And I remember saying to someone after my second or third day there, like, this altitude thing, this is no big deal. And day four, it hit. And it hit hard. And it took me a while to get ready and get acclimated. So some teams, they like to come in early. Try